joined by uh, the man who puts this all together, Mike, the CEO and co-founder of Blizzard. Mike, how was day one for you, BlizzCon? Day, day one was awesome. Now, you had some amazing contests last night, the dance contest, sound alike, machinima. What was your favorite moment from the contest last night? Uh, you know, I love, I love seeing all the cosplayers. Yep. Uh, I thought we had some great costumes last night. Um, dance contest is always a lot of fun. But Jay Moore was really funny. He was Jay really Moore's. funny last night. I thought so, too. He had some really quick <laughs> responses, you know. Yep. Guido and, uh, and Tony. They yeah, did. Exactly. Tony was good. <laughs> yeah, no, it was I awesome. think one of my favorite moments, though, was when uh, the voice of God came in and said, uh, Jay, it's God. I figured it out. We're going to run a clip and come back later. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was great, and obviously, uh, you know, the costume concept was phenomenal, as you mentioned. Uh, you know, just amazing the creativity of these fans and how you know people put these things together. Although last year the winner was the uh, the mechanized float, the girl yeah. with the wheelchair. I was thinking she was going to come back with something mechanized I this know, year. I know, I was expecting something too. Didn't happen, I nope. guess. But was she back this year? We couldn't figure that out. I don't know. Oh, well. Well, it was still amazing to see the creativity of all the fans. Now, one of the other big things that happened yesterday was fans actually got to go hands-on with uh, Diablo 3, the brand-new Monk class, uh, World of Warcraft Cataclysm, and StarCraft 2 campaign. You know, that's really important for you guys at Blizzard to see the fan reaction. So what were you hearing from the fans? What did the fans think of the games when they got to go hands-on? All I've been hearing is a uh, really positive response from everything. Um, I, you know, I've been talking to people who've gotten back in line three times yesterday right. to continue playing like the Diablo 3 uh, demo. And there was another big announcement yesterday that came later in the day from Rob Pardo, and that was on the Battle.net uh, developments that are happening. And I didn't realize 12 million people have registered on Battle.net. Well, actually, quite a lot more than that have registered. Those really? are just the active people. That's wow. incredible. That's I mean, everyone always talks about the WoW numbers, and here you have this other thing in your pocket, this Battle.net. Yeah. It's amazing. And so you, you're basically developing um, a complete online community gaming experience. Can you tell us a little bit about that from your perspective? Well, you know, when you think about um, the way that players interact, even in World of Warcraft, it's very right. fragmented. Yeah. So, um, you know, you're able to communicate with your guild and the people on your realm. Right. But um, if you, even if you cross faction, um, you're really not able to communicate anymore unless you do something outside outside the game. Right. And I think Battle.net's really going to help bridge that. So you'll be able to stay in touch with your friends, really, no matter. Um, you know, where you're playing, what realm you're playing on World of Warcraft, or even if you're playing other Blizzard games. Makes sense. And one of the things I thought that was most impressive was the, the idea of mini tournaments and ladders. There's going to be 100 people in each group. Is that how it's set up? Yeah. Um, you know, we're sort of thinking of it like, um, think about, you know, your local uh, softball league. Right, you know, right, right. When you, when you uh, enter your team in the C League in Irvine, <laughs> you're not competing against all the other um, softball teams in the world because that just wouldn't be any fun right um, but if you get a smaller group of teams playing that are about the same level then it's fun for everyone and we're trying to recreate that, that makes sense. now we also have some questions for you from Twitter Mike I know Blizzard has Twitter accounts at Diablo at Warcraft and at Starcraft we also have accounts where you guys can send us questions we're gonna ask some questions right now to you so let's go right now to one question this is at Jeff Keeley you can send me questions and this one is, is there any outside chance of a simple LAN coming in StarCraft 2? I know there's been a lot of debate about how StarCraft 2 may not have LAN play in it. Can you explain a little bit about why you made that decision and what might happen in the future? We know we're, we're really um, integrating Battle.net into uh, StarCraft 2 in a way that we've never really never done before in our Blizzard games. So um, we're thinking about this as an always connected experience. and. Um, in order to do that, you really need everybody always to be connected. Um, and so uh, at this point, we are not, um, we're not planning for land support. Even though there are petitions online. <laughs> we're aware of the petitions. <laughs> have they been sent directly to your home yet? <laughs> uh, don't give them any ideas, Kat. <laughs> All right, no problem. <laughs> now let's go to another uh, Twitter question that folks have been asking here. Uh, lots of responses for you. Uh, a lot of people asking what's going on with uh, World of Warcraft, Cataclysm. Um, I think people are wondering, Cataclysm, this world event, how is it going to impact the uh, the game going forward? Are we going to see that sort of you know world out in patches, or is it all going to wait until the expansion pack comes out? How are you guys going to go about changing the world? Yeah, you know, I'm going to let the uh, developers roll that out, that okay. information out in a time frame that they're ready to, to talk about it. All right. But, uh, you know, I think that the... Uh, the whole cataclysm concept gives us this huge opportunity to go back and um, 
and make a lot of changes to uh, and enhancements to the old world to give people reasons to go back and experience the old world areas, which are really vital to World of Warcraft. Right. Um, you know, and uh, we want players to be uh, able to experience those areas and, and keep them fresh. We also know that there are new players coming in uh, to World of Warcraft, you know, starting at level one that have never played before. And um, we've learned so much in the last five years about how to make the game more engaging. And we want to apply those learnings to, you know, the level one through 15 experience as well. Absolutely. You've done a lot of changes over the last year to try to make um, not so not to dumb well down, but to make well more accessible for people that are coming in, and also to bridge that gap since they are going from zero to eighty-five. I mean, we're going to obviously well is going to be here for a long time. I mean, are there? Do you, have you had feedback from new players coming in, and have you been able to get active feedback from them? And what is it like for a new players starting out? Um, you know, it it really depends on. Um, a, a lot of different factors. Right. Um, we know that there's a lot we can do right now to improve j just, you know, things like the install right. process and um, depending on, um, you know, the speed of your connection, if you try to download everything, sometimes that can be a, a long process. Um, right. We've really been working to try to improve the patch process. You're not having to download multiple patches to get all patched up. Right. Um, I think that uh, depending on which realm you start up your character can make a huge difference. If you start up your character in an area where there just aren't a lot of people playing in your starting area, the world can feel very empty. Right. And so we've been trying to guide people, um, new players, you know, to uh, specific realms that um, we're all, where uh, a lot of other new players are also starting. And so they're able to experience that with other people. All right, back to Twitter here for another question. This one comes from Nan Deeb, uh, Jorge, and he says, any news about the unnamed MMO? How is it going? Actually, uh, it's going really well. It's still early in development, um, but we do have really some of our most talented uh, development leadership that has, is already working and focused on that project. Right. So, um, I mean, you can think of it as sort of the Blizzard All-Star team um, with years and years of MMO development experience that are totally excited and geeked up about this new idea. That, and I, unfortunately, I can't give a whole lot more than that. Do we know if it's in one of your existing universes or it's a new universe, or have you guys given any details on that yet? Um, we've said it's in a new universe. Oh, wow. All right. Well, that's pretty exciting because you guys have had these three universes for so many years. So uh, that's fantastic. Any, any timeline of when we might hear about what that universe is or you guys would start hinting I about think, it? I uh, think it's going to be a while okay. before you hear much more about it. You know, right now, focus is on StarCraft II, Battle.net. Um, once we get that out, it'll ship to uh, Diablo III. Of course, we've got Cataclysm in full production. Right. And so... Uh, okay. We're asking all the tough questions. It feels like on. you're on 60 Minutes here, right? <laughs> Mike, all the, all the fans want to know all these answers. But you guys are great at keeping secrets, because, I mean, no one knows anything about this, this team. They, can they even tell their wives about what they're working on? Well, you know, it, the way we look at it, it's sort of, it's really not fair for us to, to uh, tell people that don't work at Blizzard um, some of the stuff that we uh, feel is highly confidential because they really, you know, they, they don't know what's confidential and what's not. And to put them in that position where they could potentially um, make break news right. could be quite embarrassing for everyone. Exactly. All right, Mike, well, let's take a look now at what's happening today at BlizzCon because there's a lot of great panels that are going to be happening. Of course, we'll be covering them on DirecTV. It starts in just about 15 minutes with the Diablo 3 open Q&A panel where fans are actually going to address the developers like Jay Wilson. Then we move on to the World of Warcraft Dungeons and Raids panel at 4 p.m. Eastern. The StarCraft 2 lore panel happens at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. And I've heard a little rumor that there may be a special guest appearing on that panel. Anything you can tell us about that, Mike? I'll confirm your rumor. Okay, the, there's a rumor. <laughs> we don't know who the guest is, but you guys will definitely want to tune in for that. And of course, later tonight, you're going to be picking up the bass I am. to play level 80. Elite Tour and Chieftains will be uh, performing later on tonight. We have the StarCraft II gameplay panel at 7 p.m. Eastern, and then the closing ceremonies, as I referred, featuring a performance from you guys, level 80 ETC, and then of course, Ozzy Osbourne is going to be live on Direct TV. That's right, and it's uh, and, uh, phenomenal. And I can tell you, uh, those of us who were lucky enough to hear their sound check. Um, Ozzy's band sounds incredible. Yeah. They Just incredible. Phenomenal. And, um, you know, these are our big halls, and you don't really expect the acoustics to be all that good. But I can tell you, it sounded good. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, we can't wait to uh, see you slapping the bass later tonight. Mike, uh, thank you so much for coming by, and we'll see you later on today. But